comes meeting to order of the North uh, Clark's Park School Committee. That's <laughs> correct. Uh, Thursday, October 3rd, 2019. 70 minutes. If you have a chance to look over. Do you have any points of discussion or questions? No, no, I'll go to the Do you want to make a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the Clark's Park School Committee meeting minutes from Thursday, September 5th, 2019. I will second them. <laughs> Seeing as how it's just the two of us, we can do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to the financial statement. Any discussion there? statement July to September of 2019. Okay, would you like to give us your principal's report? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I added another bullet that I'll just tell you about. Okay. Do you want? Uh, I, 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 my computer's been fish out a lot. I'll see if I can do this. Um, so, um, just to update you on professional development and staff, um, we Redeker is our information system. Um, it uh, also provides our report cards, our online portal for parents to see grades, and now we have a teacher evaluation tool. Uh, with Redeker. So I just wanted to update you on that. There's, um, you know, we're spending $500 more on Redeker than we were last year because of the teacher evaluation tool, which is streamlined all the paperwork that goes into the evaluation process um, to a portal as well. So um, one of our schools in our union row uses that already, um, and I'm trying to learn how to use that <coughs> from them, from um, Josh, who's been really helpful with a webinar set up to, to learn that process. So that's in the works. Um, teachers here were able to do a Redeker webinar um, on September 18th, which is also our, oh, I'm sorry, not Redeker. I'm sorry, I'm flipping to iReady now. <laughs> so that's Redeker. Um, I ready. We did a, a webinar as well as professional development for our K two staff. It was meant for everybody, but we had we had a really interesting September eighteenth, which I'll talk about later, um, which prevented some of our staff from I readying. Um, I ready is our online assessment tool for students, and um, teachers were able to participate in a ninety minute session um, where they learned a little bit more about the tools that are available um, through the online learning platform um, after students take a diagnostic. We now have for every individual student in the school a customized personal learning path for them that they can um, utilize that's tailored to what their diagnostic look like. So if the diagnostic for ELA or math said that they were not doing so hot with geometry, they can log in at any time when the teacher wants to maybe have a station um, available to them where they are on a um, Chromebook, they can log on and do a 15 minute, 20 minute lesson on geometry. That's tailored to them and what they need, which is a really nice, um, really nice instructional tool to have because then it takes something off the plate of the teacher to have to plan. They're already planning and differentiating in so many ways. This um, online tool can do it for them um, as long as the diagnostic was captured accurately from the student. But um, the students also take this diagnostic three times a year. They have growth monitoring, so the online tool would adjust if needed. Um, so that's been going on in terms of professional development. I just wanted to update you that there are many staff members taking classes outside of here. Um, we have one, two, three, we have seven of us who are all enrolled in some sort of class um, for the fall. So that's great to see um, teachers initiating their own professional development outside. 
um, that we reimburse um, part of their courses for. Um, it comes out of our PD line on our budget. Um, staffing updates, we are still um, closing, we're closing in hopefully on a teaching assistant for the Student Support Center that was still open last time we talked. Um, <coughs> we are working hard to try to make that happen as it's a pretty critical need in our school and we're just trying to, to make sure we can fill that. Um, otherwise, every other position is filled and we're going doing well. Um, questions on I'll go to number two. Number two is teaching and learning. Um, everyone in Clarksburg has been buzzing about our September 18th hike, um, which I call here Buzzing with Beauty. We had lots of lessons we learned. I'm sure everybody here has already got the lowdown. Um, I had some pictures that I printed out of children who did not get stung <laughs> or in the back of the building. I thought I had more coming out of the printer, but they didn't print for me. Um, what, whether they were in K to 2 or 3 to 8, um, part of the reason why we went out in the woods was to apply our anchors. And the universe dealt us a wonderful day where we got stung by bees and we had to walk over muddy um, trails in the back with pallets that Mrs. Howe went out and put pallets before our walk. And we had some challenges, so to speak, and um, they used their, their perseverance and um, all their skills that they have to be able to overcome um, the challenges they, they hit out there. So um, we, we really enjoyed being able to go outside. That was our pre-hike, getting ready for our hike that's happening next week. On the 10th, we will climb to Stony Ledge uh, at the Mount Greylock Reservation. I thought I brought my map to show you where that is. Um, we have, um, so it's a bigger hike than our Clarksburg State Forest Park, and we're going to take our learning from last time and apply it to this hike next week. We have our CCC Day, which is our Clarksburg Community Circle Day, on um, October 9th, where students will prepare, we'll, they'll do some um, prep work on, um, you know, figuring out what kinds of animals and plant life they might see, maybe looking at the elevation maps, um, thinking through what they, they learned from last time and what they, how they need to prepare. Um, some other suggestions were that, you know, and teachers are kind of at different age levels grappling with, you know, the different kinds of lessons that they'll present before we hike. But there's so many learning opportunities available um, as we get ready to go back out in the woods again. That's exciting. Um, I think that everyone who went on the hike um, in September said it was just really great to watch students um, be outside and connecting with each other, connecting with their environment, um, talking to each other, looking around and observing, um, which is sometimes things that some of our students don't have the opportunity to do very often. So um, we were excited. And if you want to chaperone, on the 10th, come on out, anybody out there, come get Cory check. Um, <laughs> some people will make some hikes. Uh, our plan on the 10th is to leave here in the morning and go on three different paths that all converge at the same place, Stony Ledge. And they'll be, again, differentiated and tailored um, for everybody's needs, which is a big symbol for how we approach learning. We meet everybody where they are, and we all are trying to get to the same place, and maybe we take different paths, but we're all going to get there. So that's one of our essential learnings of this hike that it symbolizes. And then we'll all walk back to the bus and get driven home, but um, <laughs> we don't have to hike back down. Um, we're going to have lunches there, bag lunches. It'll be a great day, hoping that it doesn't rain. Right. Um, so that's that. I uh, just wanted to update you that the new things we're implementing for grade 7 and 8, which are electives and literature circles, are up and running and running, I think, pretty well. Students have the opportunity to take French, Spanish, um, portrait drawing, um, 3D sculpture making, um, music, genealogy. genealogy. Um, they have modern music with Mr. Green, um, Rube Goldberg, where they're designing um, simple machines that are complex machines that do simple things, rather. Um, and in the mix of, of that, uh, in the mix, we're trying to provide academic support to students who need academic support. So it's a nice time where everyone's mixed up and nobody knows where everybody's going to try to pull aside those students who need some support and give them what they need. 
with teachers. Um, literature circles, everyone in grade seven and eight is paired up, paired up in a group of four. They're reading a contemporary novel, they're debriefing and talking about it, and we'll do that for seven weeks and read. Um, so, got some fun things going on. Um, back to my agenda. Um, K to two, I just want to give a shout out to K to two. They've, they've, um, everybody in the building has done um, what we always do with a diagnostic dive at the beginning of the year. We, we always want to see what our students know, where their weaknesses are, where their strengths are, and we have the same tools that we've been using historically to do that. And K to two took that one step further and started to do some deeper analysis with their data that, um, with the help of um, Phyllis Hakeem was coming in and, and giving them some guidance and other ways to look at some things, which has just created a lot more work for them. And, um, and they've, they've been going back to the diagnostic tools and kind of just weeding through them one more time and pulling out more information than they had before and just looking at it different ways, which I just think it's, it's sometimes we don't appreciate always the, the hard work that happens behind the scenes. We see what happens in the classroom, but there's a lot of, of work that goes into knowing our students. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, <coughs> and also shout out to three through five who have done a really tight job of um, building in these social emotional learning skills that we've been focused on at coming out of our poly bath PD into their content areas because one message Polly said to us over and over again was when we're trying to understand behavior and intervene and then teach social skills and, and emotional skills, um, it doesn't happen just in morning meeting, it happens all day long. It happens when we're teaching math. We you know we don't teach just math, we teach kids. So 3 to 5 um, has been doing a phenomenal job of trying to make those connections um, all throughout their day, and it's pretty evident um, in what you see hanging in their rooms and, and the things that they're doing. So just wanted to recognize that. Um, I have uh, received one homeschool letter of intent so far from one family. Um, I'm waiting on two more to come through, and, you know, I pretty much look at what they, I have a copy of what they've submitted. Do you want to, this is one set. Um, and this is, that's another set. I mean, it's the same copy. I didn't, okay. I didn't staple it. Sorry. Um, this is pretty much what it looks like when they come in. An overview of what they'll be doing for the school year. This is a family of three students. Um, they submitted their portfolio for last year and um, we can do a approval of all, I'm anticipating two more coming in, so we can wait on approving um, this family to homeschool when we approve the other two at the next meeting, or we can do this one now, either way, pretty much they're already homeschooling right now, so <laughs> they're not here. And they have in the past, too. Yes. <laughs> so. Do you approve the ones for the high school age kids, too? I don't receive, well, yeah, I mean, there are some high school age kids. Yes, yeah. There's at least one. Possibly. Yeah. I just just curious what that process has been in the past. That's all. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. And yes, I mean, they live in Clarksburg. That's, that's, they do. Yeah. Um, most of them have been young, but now they're since I've been here, they've grown four years. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, they're they're now <laughs> some of them. Right. I mean, I, I think it's fine. I mean, we'll just look into that. Make sure that's. Uh, right. No, I think that's a good point right. to. to just to make sure, just to make sure they're covered. I think, they're, I think it's fine, but we should probably check on that just to make sure. Well, then why don't we, do, maybe we can hold off on this family until the October. next yeah. meeting, just to be, to be sure, and I can look into that. Because there is one student who is high school here. Do you have copies of the same? Um, oh, no, I don't have it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, Also, just let you know, just an update, a quick update from the Wellness Committee. We have um, a pre-assessment that we're working on getting out to all students, K-8, in the month of October to assess their knowledge on health and wellness, that the Wellness Committee then will look at the data and try to determine what actionable steps we would take throughout the year in accordance with our wellness plan. Um, based on what we see students might need, and then assess them at the end of the year. So I have revisions that I still have to type in for the survey from our last wellness committee meeting, and get that survey out, um, and have students give us that information. So that's in the works. We do have um, 
safe routes to school coming in November to do at the beginning of November to do a pedestrian um, uh, safety training. It's a um, assessment of uh, our entrance in the morning and how pedestrian friendly that is. So they come and they do. Um, they look at the where the cars come in and what the parking lot looks like and um, where are the blind spots where drivers can see someone walking and they have a whole checklist of things that they they look at. This is just one of the, the services that they offer um, in thinking about how to be a more pedestrian friendly and bike friendly school, which is really tough to be pedestrian friendly here because we, <coughs> you know. <laughs> But um, it'll be interesting to see what they see, and if they have any recommendations that maybe they mark off, you know, uh, a walking path somewhere or designate a space through our parking lot that's, you know, more designed for pedestrians um, so that they are safer, maybe they'll give us some recommendations we haven't been thinking of. So I just wanted to let you know that's coming out of the wellness committee. And that's good too, Gus, to address what we talked about the last meeting with a neighbor that talked about the, the high volume of traffic early in the school year, which is natural because some of the kids that would take the bus don't. Yeah. The first, you know, week or two of school don't always take the bus right away. So, but it's also just because of the way we're um, situated and a number of school choice and everything else that we have. You know, you can't really. It's hard to walk the school year because of the way the road's set up. So it makes it challenging um, during those times of traffic. I think I've watched the staff and. The, the plan that we have to rotate families through, and I think it's really done very well. But it's nice that you know we're still trying to mm -hmm. work on ways to make it even better. So, yes, if someone sees something we don't see, we'd love to know <laughs> of how how else to do this to keep everybody moving. I think it's an example of the school listens. The school tries to work with the community, to help the kids, and do its best. And I think that's uh, just want to applaud you and the staff for doing that. We're trying. All right, that's the wellness committee. Um, just policy updates because there are some policies I just want to address. Um, I'll do the easy one first. The AHERA plan, we do, and I think we might have talked about this last time, but I can't remember. The AHERA plan is something that um, all, it's AHERA, A-H-E-R-A, -E um, management plan that every school that has anything containing asbestos in their building has to have on site. So it's a detailed um, description, a list of where um, it's assumed that asbestos containing materials are, are in this building and where, if it is tested, if they know where it is, where, where those places are. Um, there is protocol in that management plan as to who is a designated person to be able to oversee things, um, the process by which contractors come in and are alerted to where asbestos is, um, where they sign in, what they sign off on. There's a whole um, whole plan that every school has to abide by. And we have that plan um, in our office available to anyone in the public who wants to see it. I sent that out to parents. It's on our website. Um, just to bring up that school committee to make sure that everybody in the community knows that that document, uh, that binder is on site. It's also at the union office um, for anybody to be able to view if they'd like. And yeah, just to follow up, I mean, I'm you're going to have a lot more fun on October 10th than I am when I go to the eight hour designated person training down in West Springfield for the AHERA plan. So, for all our schools, uh, but yeah, it obviously came about because of our um, situation this summer, which has been addressed and it's all set. But uh, one of the things we learned from our meeting with the uh, uh, Department of Labor is they have to have a designated person who can. Uh, work together with the school so we'll oversee these issues. We've been working together and I think doing a great job of that. So I get the school first to make sure that we are uh, addressing these issues and you know with three of our four schools they are older buildings so we certainly do have um, uh, these situations to make sure we are I'm aware of and AT, uh, yeah, ATC has been great about their uh, um, communication with us. Uh, Derek Wisman and his team are <coughs> making sure we know where the issues potentially are, and um, you know, we work together with uh, Janet McKenna uh, from the Department of Labor on some corrective action, which we've addressed, and a couple things that we're still working on, just basically training for myself and the custodians that I have to go through, and uh, you know, I did meet with Derek last week about a few other issues, and he's getting some supplies for us that we need in the school, um, and we're hoping that we can, with the, uh, the building project and the front entrance, we can address some of the tile um, situation that we've had. Recently, and I think we have a good plan in place for that. 
so I can definitely, uh, uh, you know, Principal Burns and, uh, and, uh, and Mary's been great about her follow-up on that as well, so it's, it's, it's really been a situation that was a little stressful this summer, but it's been handled very well, it's, you know, we're moving forward from that. It also points out there are some key areas in all of our buildings that have to be addressed, so um, we'll talk more about that at the October 21st meeting up in Florida for the MBSU committee, but uh, that's just something that we'll have to keep on our radar, obviously. So the plan's here. Um, I also wanted to share with you some updates to our school choice policy. Um, this is a draft of updates um, that I'd like to make. Um, we have something online um, that outlines the timeline of how we do school choice. Um, and some questions have arisen in the past few months um, about school choice that have helped me clarify some things for our policy. So these are the clarifications um, after consulting with our, our attorney um, who is expert in this in the law. Um, we just added a couple of things that um, would, I guess, give us some more structure to school choice. So what that looks like is we typically have had school choice openings that you all have been a part of where you're opening up school choice slots in the spring. We have a lottery for when we have more than the number of slots available. Um, particularly, we usually have that lottery in kindergarten, but you can have that lottery for any grade level if you had more than the slots you open. And then, um, and there was always a timeline for that because we wanted our kindergartners who were coming in to, to be part of our, our orientation thing. And then we would revisit and look at where residency, um, if we got more incoming students over the summer and what that looked like. And we oftentimes would open up some additional slots, which you did last year, after the initial opening. And so the, the tweak that we're adding is making a set time frame for when the slots close. Um, because we've been open-ended with it um, in the past in, in consultation with our attorney. His recommendation is to ensure that we set <coughs> um, set a time frame, particularly in that second time we open, um, so that we can um, we can do that before school starts and know who is entering before the big, before the first day of school, um, because we did have a lot of students enter as residents over the summer after we opened those school choice slots. And um, it just, you know, so I think if we, if we um, make clear bookends to our, our openings, then we'll just be a little tighter with, with how we proceed. And the other thing is it's not really a rolling admission kind of process. If we have time frames, then, for example, in the summer, if we have three, let's say, three choice slots in third grade, and one person calls on July 2nd, and what we've done in the past is we've kind of, um, because they never fill, we take them on a rolling admission. And that's fine for some, like North Adams always takes it on a rolling admission because they always kind of have more slots open than what they get. But when we've hit those slot numbers, what we, should, what we need to make sure we're doing with that end time frame is having a lottery. So you hold all of the ones who, who would like a slot over that time frame, and then you pull the lottery if you have to pull it at that time at the end. And if there's no need for a lottery at that end date, you're able to say, well, guess what? There's no lottery. You're all, you know, all two of you can come because there's three slots open. And the third one closes at that point, right? So that's just how I think adding that bookend makes it a little bit different than what we've been doing um, in the past. So. Um, and the other guidelines, we, you know, the other pieces in this, we've already been doing. We already have, we followed the number five about the sibling of a child who's currently enrolled. That's not new. That's what we've always done. We've always done number six so about the transportation and busing. We don't, we're not obligated to, to transport anyone that, you know, who's school choice. So this is not a new policy per se. It's some of the things that we've been doing. It's just that added pieces. That's the only piece that's different. I have draft written on it just because I feel like it needs to be approved um, by someone. 
I don't know if we can do that without Eric here. I'm just thinking maybe you, just because they're just receiving it today and Mr. Dennett's not here, maybe I'll wait yep. until October to approve. Just a suggestion, that's up to the school committee they want to do. I would just say that might be our best. I just want to clarify one thing you were saying because I had a question and I think you answered it. Um, so say we have three slots in grade four mm -hmm. and our end date is August 15th. Two of them fill. Mm -hmm. We close the third. Mm -hmm. We don't, you know, someone is Correct. interested. In, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And part of that is, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult when you have new students entering in December. In you know, yeah. it, it just is, makes for a hard transition often. Um, and um, part of it is that rolling piece of just you want to sort of have it set so that you know. Maybe it doesn't apply, but um, I feel like the determination of whether or not you're having a lottery or not, no, that doesn't impact it. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself. Shouldn't. Okay. But the recommendation was to close the slots at your determined date of whenever it was. You could choose if you wanted to to keep them open. I think school by school can choose. But then we would run into the lottery issue, wouldn't we? Because then what if someone came two days later and we had just after we've said we closed it? Do you know what I mean? Right. That's what I was starting to think. Yeah. I'm not sure that that. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's good to have a final, that, you know, I something too. final. I think it's good for the school to know what to yeah. expect. Because then, yeah. Come to the school fair there. as well. Yeah. The state recommends that when I talk to our attorney, he says most schools have um, two windows that they open, and they, he recommends always a time frame. And that when the time frame is yeah. over, then the slots are. If they're not filled and you haven't had lottery, then I think that's the biggest update is making sure we have a time frame yeah. um, with no pending date so that we can plan for <coughs> slots. And it also, I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, that way it won't just be a first come, first serve. We would open it for uh, whatever, a two week period. And if we have three slots available in grade two and we get um, during that time period, we get five, then we do the lottery. If we only get two, then we just fill the two, and that's the end of it. That's uh, right. would be the, would be just uh, one being left open for the whole school year. That would be the only um, action taken. And if there's a second time period we decide to do, that would be this year. I think we did like early summer, then we did something yeah. in August. We could Similar to this, but exactly. kind of like, <laughs> right. Right. right, we let this linger, <laughs> linger yeah. longer. Um, and I suppose that you could revisit this each year if you right. wanted to do something different. If you wanted to not have that end date in the second period or something like that, it could be revisited. Um, I kind of think it's necessary, and I think people, like, it gives them ample time, and it gives them two, you know, there's two time periods where they can visit it, and then the school can yeah. know what they're going to be able to handle, and right. it, so. What that also means is that if those are the time periods and you're not, you don't have another time period at any point during the school year to just open anything up. So it's, it's what would you normally? I don't know. Um, it has, it, I have been happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but would it, it like happen because of, like out of necessity for a reason, or is it something that, you know? Um, I think it could, but I think that um, what could happen potentially when you do that well, what would have to happen is you open it up, you advertise it, you put it out there for everybody who would like that slot, you know, advertise it in the paper. You have a lottery if you have more than one person who would like that slot, um, and then you could proceed. So I suppose you could open a slot if you really wanted to during the year, but that would be the process that you would go through. So you're not particularly opening it up for... Um, you know, if you're opening it, why are you opening it? Is the right. question, right? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's what you have to ask as a school committee. Why would what would be the circumstances for opening right. a slot outside of this time frame? And if we are, are we, you know, we would have to follow the law of opening it up for anybody who wanted it and advertising it. So. 
I think it's one of the things that I've discovered in the last 15 months is that we have a lot of policies in our um, towns that have been we've been using for many years, and in some cases <coughs> they're fine, but in some cases they just need to be updated. I think this is one of them yeah. that just needs to be updated, so it's um, um, a little more compliance with how things are, are done uh, uh, currently, and it, it's just one of those I think ways of updating the the protocol to make it uh, just a more fair, clearly communicated policy that will work better for um, all the students as well. Um, so we're not getting into situations, like even like last year, there was a little more, like the PCG to the report, they're recommending higher numbers. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's good they recommended that, but we have to decide, is that what we're, we really want to do? Because uh, I know that, uh, you know, their recommendation was, for, I think, for 22 students in a classroom. I think one of the strengths of our school and all of our schools is to have that smaller classroom so that we are, um, uh, you know, providing more individual attention to our students and uh, that may be the state average or whatever it may be. And I, I, I certainly think they did great work and everything they recommended to us was uh, in the best interest of our school and our students, but we also did decide what, what do we feel is, uh, you know, based on past practice and what we've seen in the school is, uh, is best for our students and our, and our overall school environment. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of, I mean, one of the issues is we have a lot of people that want to come to Clarksburg go to school. So it's, uh, it's certainly important that we have a, a, a policy in place that uh, clearly defines that so we can post it. People can understand how it works. Right. So we would hold off on voting this, the updates to this until next meeting, right? And if we were going to ever entertain the idea of opening it any other time of the year, we should probably have a... And number eight in here, where we write something to that effect, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. Although the so. feedback we got from uh, Attorney Dupre was that we should never open it just for one request during the course of the year. I'd okay, well that's why I'm wondering yeah. why it was open in the past. Was it because we got a request? Was it something mm -hmm. that this Yeah, I didn't honor that the first okay. year. I mean, <coughs> it's in past practice. We get a request, we consider it, and we act on it. So he's saying that that's not the best practice. Yeah. Um, okay. For the policy. Right. It puts you in a position to then be making decisions in particular to a family or a mm -hmm. person versus opening a slot for a class for a lottery to be had. Okay. Right? Like yeah. you cannot be thinking about this choice slot in terms of a person. You have to be thinking about the slot in terms of a slot. And it takes it sure takes a lot them. off of you in terms of right. you then are never as a committee are never in a position to then have to be accused of any discrimination, or you know, if you right. open it at this time and you don't open it at that time, or whatever, and it creates more consistency. So, it should be that you open it during these periods. They're yes. open, and then correct. When it's done, it's done. Okay. okay. I mean, I do think that there were very good intentions. There has been always very good intentions when that has happened in the past, um, and you know, I, I think that's one of the things about being a small school and, and wanting to always make sure or try to do things that feel right. Um, so that may be, that's, that's why those decisions were made before. Okay, moving on to another easy, to an easier topic. <laughs> um, we do have an, a policy about alternative learning days, which is otherwise known as blizzard bags. Yes. Um, the state is doing away with that, um, and so are we. <laughs> so oh. there will be no blizzard bags moving forward for Clarksburg School. So let's see what kind of winter it is, and we'll be here in June until we're here. So that policy will, will be taken off the policy docket. Um, too bad. It is, but... Uh, um, and then just just really quickly, I just want to thank Ed Denault again from the VFW who came and stained the picnic tables out back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. Um, just the, the little things that always add up, um, and the PTG for donating, uh, well, for buying, uh, but yes, donating two picnic tables to the school. Um, so we have four great picnic tables outside that are all stained and are being used by students to go outside and have lunch on sometimes. Yes. Um, and then the entranceway, do you have that on your your agenda, John? Well, it's part of the uh, building. Yeah. So you want to save that for the We building. can save it. Okay. <coughs> Any questions? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, John?
done, Superintendent's report? Um, well, we already had a few other things I was going to talk about, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, talk to her about the, the, the first session for teacher negotiations. will be at 5 <coughs> o'clock on Wednesday, October 9th. Um, as you remember, we did a one-year uh, just a, a addition to the three-year contract for this current year, and then we'll be looking to um, negotiate a three-year contract. So that'll be our initial one. Laura will take on uh, the role that Pat Frank Gruber had pre previously as the school committee um, representative for that uh, negotiation. But if we have more than one person, we can always just open it as a school committee meeting if we, okay. if we need to. Um, as I mentioned, the ATC training on the 10th to be the designated person. Uh, on October 11th, I'm meeting with Senator Hines uh, down in Pittsfield to discuss uh, funding for rural schools and uh, um, get some more information about this, this uh, Student Opportunity Act, which is, uh, I think I sent you some emails about that's coming out from the state about the, the plan to increase funding for elementary and secondary education by $1.4 billion uh, over and above inflation over the next seven years, starting in fiscal year 21. Um, I'll send you some information that it wasn't as quite as uh, uh, positive from, I think it was from the, uh, I was looking at this before, from the governors. Uh, there was some information out there from the Mass Association of School Committee. Uh, so they learned yesterday that the governor's staff has released projected funding estimates for the Student Opportunity Act currently moving through the legislature. And they're very concerned that the estimates are probably poorly crafted based on some unreliable assumptions and in fact misleading. So I just hope it doesn't follow the same path that it has recently where there's a lot of talk about doing some uh, improvements to the Hollywood funding education and it seems like it uh, goes to the governor and it doesn't necessarily um, follow through. But it's, I know that uh, um, from the school committee, from the uh, association of uh, superintendents, from there has been a lot of good positive support for the Student Opportunity Act over the uh, last few weeks and uh, you know hopefully what will happen is that our uh, representatives will um, support that and uh, and uh, you know state that in their sessions down in Boston to uh, follow through on this plan because it has a lot of benefits uh, you know for all areas circuit breaker would certainly be a benefit of that for a special education funding in all areas including rural schools are supposed to be addressed with that so that was one of the topics I was I'm going to talk to Senator Hines about it. He's been a, a real champion of the rural schools, so I'm um, looking forward to meeting with him in a couple of weeks to discuss that further. Um, actually, next week, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, uh, that's important, I think, for our funding. We really need that to uh, for our schools. I think we're doing a great job with what we have, but we certainly would benefit from some more funding. Because, I mean, as we mentioned, the, at the, the changes for FY20 didn't impact us at all. Um, when you hear towns like... Uh, Pistol getting $5 million extra for their budget this year. Um, you know, we got like a, I think a $1,000 or something like this. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just, it's also frustrating at times because I know how good, how hard our uh, small schools are working, how much of a quality education our kids are getting. I hear all the MCAS scores coming out now and there's a lot of manipulating of the data, is like I could say. And like, to me, like just hearing Principal Burns report earlier, what the data is used for is to help kids. It doesn't, it shouldn't really matter what the, um, overall score is or classification is, and by the way, all of our schools are not requiring any assistance whatsoever because they're all doing a great job. But I think the, the key thing is that, as is mentioned in the principal's report, is that they're, um, especially in this school in Clarksburg, the, the information is being used to help students to identify key areas, identify strengths, areas we can improve on, and, and to use that to target instruction that's going to help our kids make improvement in all areas. So. That's what's most important about these types of things, and to not get too bogged down in that information. But the, I mean, we don't always say it as much, but we I, we're really proud of the uh, work that's being done uh, to to have our kids be ready to move on each year and to move on to be successful when they go to high school. So um, I think that's the most uh, relevant use of the data. It's not all about the you know we made improvement in this area, and we're not going to talk about this other areas. We didn't do very well in that. So I think it's. Uh, I just like the way our schools approach it, and it's all about the student, which it should always be, uh, first and foremost. Um, we also need to, at the October meeting, talk about uh, Ron and her um, fee for, uh, that we should be putting in place for her doing the minutes. I know when she was here for the August meeting, it was part of her hours for that week, and we 
have to discuss this one too. But I think going forward, we should have a plan. Like Roe did um, uh, <coughs> approve a plan at their last meeting, and I'll share that with you before the October meeting, so you can see what their um, uh, motion and uh, plan is to uh, to reimburse uh, Principal Middle's assistant, who was doing the same role in their meetings. Um, so we should uh, try to put that in October agenda as well, so we can. Up to an executive session for that one that was discussing salary yeah. for school employee. And the other stuff is I can do it during the um, interstate and the building repair section, so I'll save those for later. You already covered a few things. Yeah, yeah we covered the, uh, I mean, the MBSU Joint Committee meeting will be on October 21st, uh, 6 p.m. at uh, in Florida, they'll have their regular Florida monthly meeting at 5 o'clock, and then we'll have our MBSU Joint Committee meeting. That's important because we have a lot of issues to discuss about, um, we have our new policy in place about updating the percentages each town pays for the uh, MBSU expenses that we, we updated with last year. So we'll go over those student population numbers for each school. Um, there'll be some updates from all the schools about um, start of the school year, and we have some, so we have some issues to talk about in terms of uh, and the last time we had a big talk here about uh, the interstate merger, we'll talk about that a little bit in a few minutes, but uh, it got a little bit of attention in some other schools about the mention of the, the big R word, regionalization, and you know, that was taken out of context, so we'll talk more about that. And, uh, but I also think that uh, you know, in regard to uh, um, the merger, that it certainly is part of our um, proposal with Stanford that the state wants to see is that not just the only option on the table, but is the best option. So are there other opportunities that we could be looking at to, as part of and joining in, in that, that uh, Clarksburg-Stanford merger? So those will be discussed more. And then also Jen has some, Jen Maxey, our uh, business administrator, has some information in regards to end-of-the-year reports and audits and things that are important all the time. Okay. We already did school choice, so I can... Uh, for the merger proposal, for the clarksburg Stanford merger, we do have uh, currently a, um, an RFP out for the uh, Phase 2 Interstate Merger Coordinator. I received several inquiries about that uh, from different companies, so in some local um, interest as well from, uh, uh, I would describe them as being uh, retired administrators in the area that are still active in uh, education that are interested in helping with that work, so we'll be getting those uh, um, Proposals in by uh, the mid of the month, I think middle of the month, end of the month, and we'll be making a decision by the end of the month about who would be hired to fill that um, position. It's being funded, just to make sure you remind by grants. The grant that uh, Stanford obtained from their state was $25,000, and uh, we still have um, about $25,000 left over from the uh, uh, it was a community compact grant that. Uh, Former Administrator McKinney got. We used a little bit of that to fund part of the, the last year's phase. And uh, we're also in the process of, as soon as they post it on a DESE site, we're going to ask for some of that regional money that they have in the governor's FY20 budget to see if we can get some of that as well. So, because we're getting into some really important issues now in terms of, um, you know, contracts and pensions and license and funding for two schools and, uh, you know, one of the things that I mentioned last time was, you know, if we had other MBSU schools involved in this, could we, you know, is there potential to um, distribute the students in a different way that would help with some of those uh, key issues that we're faced with? You know, I think one of the key issues is paying for a regional district that has a location in a different state. I think that's one of the, one of the challenging areas that we have right now because if you look at the way MBSU is set up, we receive the people that are shared between multiple schools receive checks from each of those schools mm -hmm. based on their percentage. Um, from what we've been told, and uh, uh, Ms. Olson, who was there last time as a Clarksburg treasurer, said it wouldn't be possible to pay uh, Clarksburg uh, and Stanford for, um, wouldn't be possible to pay out a Clarksburg budget for somebody working in Stanford as a teacher or a staff member. So we certainly have some obstacles to overcome there. Some, so the good news is we're going to hire somebody that's going to look into those options for us, work with both states, and find out what our answers are towards um, moving forward with that project. Uh, things to be investigated still. Mm -hmm. 
And like I said, we have to reschedule the October 10th meeting because I know there's several people in Stanford not available and they were supposed to host the next meeting, I believe. So. Yeah. Are we waiting for anyone else to discuss the building repairs and renovations? Or? Well, I know Mr. Norcross said he'd be around 5.50 or so. We can start on some things. So you can. I can talk about the entranceway. Um, as it stands, uh, Westall Architects are working on plans. Um, they've been working on plans for a while, and they should have something to us by October 14th, um, which is in two weeks. Oh, you didn't respond to say that's something I haven't done by? Okay. Yeah, they've been working um, with some engineers and drawing the design in touch with um, folks who do the glass to try to, I think, think about the details of this. Um, so I'm hoping that on October 14th, we'll be able to have some plans that we can put out to bid and that process can move. Well, the good news is the boiler project is done. Yeah. Yes. So that's the great news. I mean, we really appreciate uh, the work done by Climate. Um, I think it was the last Monday. They did uh, start the boilers up for the whole day, and there was no issues. Uh, they seem to wrap up all of their work. Um, again, we appreciate their um, effort to get that done, in spite of some of uh, the, the issues that occurred over the summer. They did a great job coming in. And, Especially with there was some cold weather coming, so it was just in time. So we, uh, we certainly had our fingers crossed that, that would all go well, and they um, they really came through and did a great job along with uh, uh, Borelli, um, who did the uh, asbestos abatement work during the summer. So we're um, we're done. We're just waiting for the final bills to come in. We have mostly grant money to cover that, but we also did put the twenty five thousand dollars in the uh, um, FY twenty budget for capital improvements in the building. So anything that goes over the uh, there was eighty-seven thousand dollars for the uh, the green grant, and uh, thirty-eight thousand that was voted on at the town meeting in May to, uh, from the school stabilization fund to cover that. That was like one hundred twenty-five thousand total. Anything above and beyond that was one hundred twenty-five thousand capital re repair line item. Or we also have the money now for the um, um, the debt exclusion line item that was voted on by the town. Uh, so that. I know Mr. Boucher said that was going to be available the first week in October, so we're, we're here. Yeah, we did have um, an electrical cost as well, right? right? That was additional um, and unanticipated because the electrical panel had to be updated to meet the system, so, but we did it. Mm -hmm. Done. Go along with some previous work we've tried to do. I think when you put something new in this building, a lot of this other <laughs> stuff is old, so you have to update the other to make compatible with each other. and. Uh, um, climate, um, you know, did a good job of uh, communicating that to the uh, select board so that it could be uh, um, a change order could be approved, and uh, it was handled very well. Did they look at and the other item on here, the moisture issues in the primary wing? Did they look into that as well? We do have October 9th where they're coming back, right? Okay. Is that, October 9th. Yeah, they're coming back to uh, climate's coming back to check on some of the heaters in that uh, section of the building. Um, and just we, you know, we, they had a good history doing some work there, so we asked, you know, uh, um, Tara's asked them to come back and uh, to, to do an inspection on the night to uh, see if they can discover any issues with the uh, heaters, and then we're just going to proceed to see what else we can find in that wing to, uh, because that can be part of our um, that exclusion plan if we think that is yeah. something that needs to be addressed. Seems like it is. I think it needs to be addressed. Just got to find out what the problem is. I yeah. think that's the key right. thing right now. Correct. And so part of it is just not the heaters, but that those air exchangers should be on all the time, even though they're noisy, but bringing in fresh air. And so if those <laughs> units Cold are there, <laughs> <laughs> right, well, and then it'll run through heat, but like all the time, those have to, we need the fresh air coming in. So it's not just about the heat, it's about them looking at, are those, are those units working properly to bring in fresh air? Um, Anytime when there, you know, when there's not heat on, because there needs to be an exchange. Yeah, so we stand. So I think we're moving forward with that. I know we talked about also for the uh, the front entrance way that uh, you know, on top of what the uh, architect is going to give us back, we also talked about you know having some work done in that. You know, 
fix all the tile in this area of the hallway without you know extending that down to the uh, lower wing. So I know there's been some issues with some tiles uh, popping up. I think in the teacher room as well. So we're going to look into that uh, process because that's also one of those areas that we become aware of that it impacts the um, Ahara. Uh, uh, so we have to make sure we have a process that we follow. We have that in place now. So, but a better process would be to, to, to solve it so it's not doesn't continue to happen. So. So we'd like to look into and know how much better this part of the wing looks. So it'd be nice to extend that down towards the entranceway while we're doing that work. Why not look at doing the floor work at the same time? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, I'm sorry, the, um, the accessibility in the bathroom. So Westall was was uh, on board to draw plans to convert a staff bathroom into an accessible bathroom, but their priority is to do the, draw the entrance first. So that plan can't. We're not going to be done until the <coughs> entrance plan. But it's, it's, they know about it and they've taken measurements for it, and that's the next thing on there. Yeah, given the window we have with the grant money, we have to do the entrance first. And I was thinking, given the scope of that bathroom work, that's almost something I would say is probably going to happen next summer, I think. Mm -hmm. But we can get all the plans drawn and bids out, and it's one of the benefits, obviously, with having uh, uh, our new business administrator, who is very um, well versed in the bid process. She's uh, been very helpful. In, Defining some timelines for our towns with these types of projects for our buildings. I do think uh, you know one thing we talked about in the August meeting, and we haven't had a follow-up, was uh, um, the idea of developing a master plan. Um, uh, I know that's something that we've been talking about at the select board meeting, um, but I know that at the last meeting there was some discussion about uh, you know following up. Uh, with the uh, with the select board to see where we stood on that. So, is there any more dialogue at the select board meeting? Yes, that would be not to my uh, knowledge. Okay. So I think that was something we discussed. How I think, you know, because with the debt exclusion money that we have, we want to make sure we have a plan for how <coughs> we, um, we are going to utilize that over the next five years. But also, the the discussion we had in August was, you know, there's more that needs to be done for both the town and the school, then just that money is going to cover and what's going to be the plan to move forward with it. Because realistically, the, as we're talking about this merger, one of the recommendations was to have a capital plan for the building. Um, and we still, we have a short-term plan, but we certainly don't have a long-term plan. And there's more issues to be addressed than just $500,000. And it's a big first step, don't we just downplay that at all. We appreciate that money, we're certainly going to use it to improve the building. And I know the town has already approved some plans for some roads that need to be um, fixed, and that's a great opportunity there as well. But uh, we know there's some other um, issues that need to be addressed, and uh, that's what we're going to have that we have that in place, so we're not just fixing things as they break, but Priority fixing places. things. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, have anything I on that? <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, I can't hear on air over here. Fifty minutes it takes to get from one to Clark's birthday. You're here. Um, but anyway, I just I want to make sure that Ed Denault and um, Mike Peters is uh, thank for doing such a good job on the picnic tables and the PGG donating them. Sorry, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then um, the boilers. I just want to make sure everything is going. They're in. Good. They're. They were uh, tested last Monday by climate, and they're they're working. So, okay. so we're done with that project. We're just waiting for all of to do all the financial work and uh, pay out of the grants and the school money that we have. And uh, so that's done. That's uh, we said we mentioned there was some electrical work done that had to be um, uh, updated because of to make it compatible with the uh, the building with the new boilers. You can't have all this brand new equipment and have all these old uh, electrical stuff. Right. Exactly. So they. Climate did do that. They approved it through the select board, and it was uh, uh, all done. Okay. Um, also, the last time we met, the moisture issues are they? Uh, yeah, October 9th, we have uh, climate coming back to do some work, okay. investigating that, just to see, you know, kind of first steps in that process to figure out what's going on in that wing. Okay. And um, with your permission, because uh, again, I don't want to do anything that um, that is behind board or that you don't know about. But uh, because the boilers are in, and because the town has uh, uh, issued five hundred thousand dollars in renovation, um, I would like to send another email um, to Adam Hines, which uh, continued for the roof money, because uh, we already got got to start thinking about next year. 
And I know the last conversation I had with Patrick Hunter Valley, it was that they were sort of waiting to see how the town was going to react, things were doing, because uh, again, as you know, um, they didn't want to put money into the building if we're not going to save it. And, and I think, um, in my opinion, <clears throat> I think it's obvious that we are going to try to save the building. And um, so, anyway, I would just like permission or, or whatever to continue to try to go for the $500,000, uh, if, if that's okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to hurt. Yeah, I think like Mr. Farrell, when I said he visited here last year, or earlier this year, I should say, was that, uh, you know, we're putting money into the school. The town has voted to, to, to approve $500,000 that you can put into the school. So that's going to only help the case when he requests it that is. funding for the roof. It is, and I certainly can understand their point. Plus, I know whenever you ask for these things, last time it's the third, fourth, fifth time you ask right. that it finally goes. You have to just, you know, be persistent. So I want to make sure um, we do that, and if I can help do that, I'd like to do that. Right, I, mean, I was reading the article about the Mount Verlock building that was in at Berkshire yesterday, I believe, and it talked about how that process started in 2003. So I mean, I have to keep asking. So I mean, that's Let's the same idea it. for, you know, it wouldn't take that long, but I mean, it certainly is, they had to ask more than once, I guess, was what I read. So yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure um, um, we have demonstrated our, our ability and I think uh, Adam Hines especially, and John Baird too, I think they're very on board that once they can show that we're, we're doing something, it'll be easier for them to justify getting the money. So um, that'll be um, that. Um, the other thing was, and I'm, uh, again, I'm sorry I'm late, um, the merger, I know that was a, the last time you talked the merger was a big issue about are other towns possibly going to be interested in joining? Or Well, that's part of what the, uh, the coordinator we're going to hire is going to look into um, because he, we really have to, um, whoever it is, because the state is telling us that uh, in order for Massachusetts to approve it, um, they're going to have to see that it's the best option, not just the only option. So, I mean, so we've gotten some pushback from some of our towns about not wanting to be involved in that, and that's, I wasn't surprised by that, but uh, it also is, uh, um, I think, important to look at all the options, too, because I think... Um, there are some obstacles with the current configuration of the proposal, and um, specifically with funding and, you know, and payroll, when you have two locations, and one's in one state, one's in the other state. So those are some things that are going to have to be looked at by the people helping with the next phase of the work to get some answers from our legislators about how that will be supported or not supported. So, uh, so yeah, we have some definite um, work to do over the next uh, fiscal year to determine what the, what that plan will be. Okay, and, and the last thing I have is uh, I haven't given up on the uh, drainage. Um, it's just it's hard when, uh, you, you know, they want to obviously change, they're very busy, but um, they they say that they still want to do it, so that hasn't, that's not dead, yeah. so you know, we'll keep working on that. And I know Tom just came in, um, so if Tom wants to add anything, we are just talking about things being like the boilers, are uh, looking in good shape. We're going to go and, and try to ask for money for the roof again this year. Ready to keep doing it. And I don't know if there's anything you have going on that you want to. Um, I know that I'd like to re-evaluate uh, what priorities are for the school for the next phase. We were talking about the master plan. Yeah, what's what's the what's the plan going to be? And you know, we talked about you know following through with the town as well about the overall master plan, but also mm. the short-term plan, so we need some more. Right, that's why I think if we prioritize what you want next, and I'm thinking the entry, the elevator, or the lift, mm -hmm. the bathroom, mm -hmm. yep. um, so you could talk to your teachers and everybody else here and send us an email or what, and then Bob and I, our group, will push forward with what you want done first, second, third, that type of thing, because um, that's what's important to us. Yeah. Is there a priority of the entryway because of the grant <coughs> that we have? To keep, uh, I would say, plus it's, it's just a smart thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think you named them, the entranceway, the bathroom. I was just saying Westall, was they have the specs on the bathroom, and they can draw that after they finish the entrance, mm -hmm. so they can start working on that drawing. When, and they, October 14th, they plan to have the drawings for us for the entrance. Who's working on it? Is Westall? Westall, yeah. 
Did they get a hold of uh, Martino Glass about that? Oh, great. Yeah, they did. Okay. Um, so that would be, we would have the plans then after the security entrance is done, then maybe that's the next piece of the bathroom and the lift. Um, I think a PA system still is a high priority. Mm -hmm. We've got new phones. Did we talk about this last time? Mm -hmm. yeah. We have new phones in classrooms, which is great. But we still, no one in the hallway can hear anything. You can't hear anything in the gym. When you try to do a lockdown drill, nobody can hear you. Mm -hmm. We need a, we need speakers <coughs> and, and that has to happen. Right, the phones are going to communicate between the classrooms and they call the classroom, but they're really not, it's not a PA system. No. So mm -hmm. we need to, mm -hmm. and that's really when the state police come in and do their um, safety training. That's one of the main things they talk about is being able to communicate in the building, not just on right. phones, but as a PA right. system. So we don't have that, and that's got to be a, Priority as well for safety reasons. And mm -hmm. I, would, I would say you chunk that into, I mean, I know for the grant, I didn't write that piece into the grant, but it's all security, right? The entrance, the PA system. So I think if you're work, you're saying this is our first priority is the security entrance, and, and we could get some idea about what we want to do with PA. Yeah, it, it could all be part time. of the lockdown system. Right, exactly. And boom, you get it all. Yes. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Right, and then move on to ADA. I was wondering, we haven't had any updates from the town about the ADA commission, because they were looking into grants. Because I also don't, you know, it's not that I don't want to get the ADA stuff done, but if they're in the process of doing things and they're getting grant money, then and we put some, uh, you know, a cart mm -hmm. before a horse, yeah, you know, grants. this, I want to make sure that we're, we're not going too, too bad. bad. Right. So... I'd like to hear from them where they are because my understanding was they had to go through the walkthrough and they did that and then I don't know where it is from there. So Should we invite somebody from that committee or town to come to the next meeting and talk to us about that? That would be great. Who, who, who do we have? I'm not, I'm not sure. Danielle, you know. It's from, Mike, you may not. It's from Boucher, right. Jim Howe, Eric Rujo, and... Um, oh. Oh no, he's amazing. Why can't I think of his name right now? Did um, he was our moderator at the last town meeting? Brian Malthrop. Brian Malthrop. Right. Okay. And Cindy. Um, Shoes. 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 I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I think he knows. Okay. Do we have contact information? Send them an email. You know where to find Eric Rogel. <laughs> I don't know if you <laughs> thought that was, that was to speak. I thought that was the amazing guy she was going to bring. I know. That was amazing guy. Video now. <laughs> 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 That's right. That's right. Could you just refresh my memory on what Mrs. Maxey's uh, role is for the master plan? She just helped to write the RFP for it. Oh, okay. And I think Ron Boucher kind of took the going back to that committee. I think when Carl left, I think Ron kind of started to lead it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know if they've met since uh, like recently? Or? Um, I know the last several meetings, it's only been partial committees, and I know that Jim and Eric went last time and nobody was there. Okay. I, I will uh, email Ron and just see what's up and see okay. if he or somebody there can come to the next meeting. Typically they do have a monthly meeting. Okay. All right. That would be good to know. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, sure, how about you get a full-time administrator in, too? Is there any progress on that? Wait. So last night... What was it last night? Yes, last night uh, we worked with uh, Miss Rebecca Stone until about 8.30 to come to an agreement on a contract. So um, tentatively she'll be starting November 12th. Well, great. Which mm -hmm. will help us out a lot for trying to yeah. keep up with everything that's going on here. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important what you were talking about earlier, just having a plan in place where you have to obviously meet and work with her as a new administrator and uh, figure out what the priorities will be. Um, I mean, we have some key priorities. We don't want the building, we have plenty of priorities that need to be addressed. But uh, the other thing, too, is we talked earlier about the whole um, plan for our HERA and our asbestos. And we know that there's, we're working very closely at ATC. So any of these projects, too, we have to make sure that if they're going to disturb anything, obviously there's only certain times they can be worked on um, mm -hmm. as we saved a lot of that work for the summer um, in regards to the boiler. So we have to really, that's where we also had ATC already come in and look at the entryway and get some feedback on that. So uh, we're trying to address some of the floor issues. So uh, 
all that kind of factors into when it can and cannot be done, too, the work. Right, and I think that, and I'm not positive, but uh, Westall was supposed to be coordinating with ATC mm -hmm. um, right now, um, because whatever goes out to bid, too, has to include where the asbestos is, and mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, so, which is, was an add-on with our boiler project, with, you know, <coughs> trying to get that together. So I think having it happen all at once this time will be really efficient and good. Mm -hmm. You did a great job with the floor and the lockers, just they look brand new. Oh. They do look great. They do. Yes. They do. Great job. Okay. We just go back to the initial thing with the master plan. We really should have some kind of a plan to meet with the select board, I think, to uh, um, start working on that plan. Just to clarify what you asked about, Jen, she had suggested in August that we don't, you know, we don't have any plan. We don't have a master plan. We don't have a, so I know that it was brought back, Ron brought it back and you voted on it and approved it, but uh, that's kind of where it stands right now. Both school committee and select board have approved it, but what's our plan to move forward to uh, um, pay for it and also make sure it's done correctly? So is it, it, it it's approved to go out to an RFP process, or was there an RFP generated yet, or where? Nothing been generated. Okay, no. It just was both boards, both the school okay. committee and the select board voted to say yes, a plan is needed. Okay, good. Yeah, but I think, I mean, um, you know, timing is always hard, and it's uh, without an administrator, it's very right. hard. I, I know Danielle and Ron, of course, you know all the issues with, like, senior centers. There's so much else going on in town, too, that I, I really think uh, when Rebecca Stone, when she starts, it'll, it'll really pick up again. That's a great point. That was what I said. Once the administrator is in place. It's really, I, that is going to be a key in right. moving along with a lot of our issues. Exactly. <clears throat> And um, we, uh, they haven't heard anything yet uh, from the ADA committee. Um, it seems that they need some direction. So. Okay. Sounds good. Meeting of the Hartsburg School Committee. Are you going to an executive session? No. No, that oh. was taken off, wasn't it? Yeah, the new one, the updated one says none scheduled in October. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so the part about Rana's salary. That's next week. The next week. Okay. November. 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 November.